And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. In St. John chapter 1 and verse about 10, He was in the world, and the world was made by Him, and the world knew Him not. He came unto His own, and His own received Him not. But as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh. God was manifest in the flesh and dwelled among us, and we beheld His glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. The Bible said Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Church of Jesus Christ presents Pastor and Evangelist Pete Rowe. Praise the Lord. We want to welcome you again today to our program here. And glad once again the Lord's allowed us a chance to get to be with you. And the message that we're speaking on today is concerning the beast that's going to eventually ascend out of this earth in its fullness. And today I want to especially dedicate it now to the sick and shut in. And you that are in the nursing homes and hospitals, we love you and thank God for all of our listeners and Today I'm going to ask you if you got a Bible. We're speaking out of the book of Daniel, and I'm speaking on the beast that, first of all, John wrote about in the book of Revelation chapter 13. And he saw that beast likened unto a lion, a leopard, and a bear. And then there was the fourth part of that beast, or the fourth beast. And then in Daniel 7, Daniel was breaking it down into kingdoms and showing us what the beast is. Well, then we're going to have to find out, too, that there had to be an image. So the book of Daniel interprets the image of the beast and let us know who these kingdoms are. That's like a lion, a bear, and a leopard. But first of all, won't you listen now? Daniel was a wise man in God, and God gave him the gift to interpret dreams and to dissolve doubts. And Nebuchadnezzar, he had his wise men, he had his Chaldeans, his magicians and sorcerers, and he played a wise thing. He wanted his dream that was troubling him so bad, he wanted it answered, and they couldn't do it. So he told them, said, now if you can't show me the dream, then you'll not be able to show me the interpretation. You see, he was very wise in the way he handled the matter. But it was bringing death to him. But now listen to what happened in verse 9 of the second chapter of the book of Daniel and listen to what the king said. But if you will not make known unto me the dream, there is but one decree for you. For you have prepared lying and corrupt words to speak before me till the time be changed. Therefore tell me the dream and I shall know that you can show me the interpretation thereof. The Chaldeans answered before the king and said, There is not a man upon the earth that can show the king's matter. Therefore there is no king, lord, or ruler that asks such things of any magician or astrologer or Chaldean. And it is a rare thing that thou, king, requireth. And there is none other that can show it before the king except the gods whose dwelling is not with flesh. Listen to this now. For this cause the king was angry and very furious and commanded to destroy all the wise men of Babylon. See, now this king was very angry because they didn't know the dream or the interpretation and he just made his mind up that he was going to kill all the wise men and that included Daniel. But watch what happened. And the decree went forth that the wise men should be slain. And they sought Daniel and his fellow fellows to be slain. Then Daniel answered with counsel and wisdom to Eric, captain of the king's guard, which was gone forth to slay the wise men of Babylon. See, Daniel had found favor with him. He answered and said to Eric, the king, captain, why is the decree so hasty from the king? Then Eric made the thing known to Daniel. Then Daniel went in and desired of the king, notice this, 
that he would give him time and that he would show the king the interpretation. Then Daniel went to his house and made the thing known to Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, his companions, which is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that they would desire mercies of the God of heaven concerning this secret, that Daniel and his fellows should not perish with the rest of the wise men of Babylon. Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. See how God honored his men? The secret was revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. Then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. See where all the real things of God comes from? And he changes the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and sets up kings. That ought to show you God's got control. The Bible said he gives wisdom unto the wise, talking about the wise in God, and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. You see, Paul spoke about it and said, By his spirit he reveals these things. He knows what is in darkness, and thank God light dwells with him. And he said, I thank thee and praise thee, O thou God of my fathers, who has given me wisdom and might, and has made known unto me what we desire to thee. For thou hast now made known to us the king's matter. Now watch this. Therefore Daniel went in unto Arik, whom the king had ordained to destroy the wise men of Babylon. He went and said thus unto him, Destroy not the wise men of Babylon. Bring me in before the king. Listen what faith old Daniel's got. Bring me in before the king, and I will show the king the interpretation. You see, Daniel trusted his mind with God, and God revealed the secrets that Nebuchadnezzar had been thinking on his bed. Then Eric brought in Daniel before the king in haste and said thus unto him, I have found a man of the captives of Judah that will make known unto the king the interpretation. The king answered and said to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar, Art thou able to make known unto me the dream which I have seen and the interpretation thereof? See, the king tried Daniel too. He said, I don't want just the interpretation. You tell me the dream, then I'll know the interpretation's right. Now watch what he said. Daniel, Daniel answered in the presence of the king and said, The secret which the king demanded cannot the wise men, the astrologers, the magicians, and the soothsayers show unto the king. They couldn't do it. No matter how many tricks they pulled out of their little bags, they couldn't show it. But there is, Daniel said, a God in heaven, thank God, that reveals secrets and makes known to the king Nebuchadnezzar what shall be in the latter days. Talking about out in the future for the king. And he said, Thy dream and the visions of thy head upon thy bed are these. Now look how clever Daniel is in God. As for thee, O king, thy thoughts came into thy mind upon thy bed. What should come to pass hereafter? Isn't it good to know we got a God that knows the future? Didn't Jesus say, I am the beginning and the ending? Do you know he knows the end from the beginning? Jesus is the one that knoweth all things. And Peter said, Lord, you know all things. And listen to what he said. The Bible said, but as for me, this secret's not revealed to me, Daniel said, for any wisdom that I have any more than any living, but for their sakes that shall make known the interpretation to the king, and that thou mightest knowest the thoughts of thy heart. Now everybody, listen to verse 31. We're going to see the dream, and then God will interpret it. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold a great image. Remember? In Revelation 13, John called it a beast like a leopard, a bear. And then Daniel 7, he seen them kingdoms raising up and called it four beasts or kingdoms, a lion, a bear, a leopard, and your fourth beast. Now he is seeing it in the image. So we've got the image of the beast now. The Bible said, Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image 
This image whose brightness was excellent stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold. His breasts and his arms were of silver. His belly and his thighs of brass. Here it is. His legs, remember he had two legs, of iron. His feet, part of iron and part of clay. There's the key of the whole knowledge of this prophecy is the fourth beast. As Daniel 7 said, the feet that had the ten toes was none other than the Roman Empire. And that's what Daniel's going to show us here. This same beast that Daniel 7 spoke about is the uh, dream that Nebuchadnezzar had and Daniel interpreted. Anyway, the Bible said here, his legs was of iron, his feet was part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone, watch this, was cut out without hands, which smote the image were upon its feet that were of iron and clay. Now this stone did not smote the image in the head or in the thighs, but it smote it upon its feet that was of iron and clay. And break them the pieces. Now watch this. Them was the iron, that's one. The clay, two. The brass, three. The silver, four. And the gold, five. Broken to pieces and became like the chaff of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away. Now you remember in Daniel, I believe it's 17, the Bible said there are seven kings. Five are fallen. I'm going to show you them five that fell was this image that Daniel speaking about. And I'm going to show you who the first was and the rest of them. And then the fourth beast is for the key and knowledge of this beast that was to rise up and the stone would be born in the days of that king, which is the Roman Empire. Daniel said here, the stone smote the image upon its feet that was of iron and clay. And then it told about there was no place found for them. And the stone became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Daniel said, this is the dream. So there was your dream. And we will tell thee the interpretation thereof before the king. You see what I'm saying? I don't have to stand here and try to figure this out. The Bible tells you the interpretation of who this image is that's gold and silver and brass and iron. It'll tell you here. And watch what he said. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, talking to Nebuchadnezzar, O king, are a king of kings. For the God of heaven has given you a kingdom, power, strength, and glory. See? And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, the fowls of the heaven, has he given into thine hand, talking to Nebuchadnezzar, and made thee ruler over them all, thou, talking to Nebuchadnezzar the king, thou art this head of gold. So who is the first king? which the Bible called like a lion. That is none other than uh, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of the Babylon. He is the first one. He's the head of gold. And then after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee, and then a third kingdom that will bear rule over all the earth. And then we find, listen to this in verse 40. And the fourth kingdom, notice the description, shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaks in pieces, subdue all things, and as iron that breaks all these, shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet, here it is, and the toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron. Honey, I'm going to show you that potter's clay was the Judean kingdom, and the iron was the Roman Empire. See how perfect it is? That's your fourth beast. And the Bible said the kingdom shall be divided because the Jews wouldn't mix. But there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. In other words, the Jews wanted their own king and they give them the herds. Caesars did. So that shows you right there that the Jews didn't want to mingle with them or mix. But nevertheless, the strength of the iron was Rome because Caesar ruled the world. And the Bible said... 
And as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom will be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, notice that, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And I'm going to show you that clay is the Jews, and they wouldn't mix with them. They won't today with nobody. But here's the key of it. And in the days of these kings, the fourth beast, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom which shall never be destroyed. And the Bible said it will not be left to other people. But it shall break in pieces and consume all of these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. Did the Bible say the God of heaven would set up a kingdom? Well, let's find out who that is. Here it is, verse 45. For as much as thou sawest that the stone... Who is that stone? Is that the same stone that Peter said there's no salvation in any other? Jesus Christ was born in the days of Augustus Caesar, and Herod was a ruling Judah there is your arm and clay. And Jesus is that stone. It is not out in the future. He was born in them days. And he's the one now that was to smoke that image upon its feet. That was of arm and clay. That's why the Bible said Christ took on himself flesh and blood. That through his death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. How was he to do it? By tearing down that ruling power that one man had the consent and rule of the world. See, did the Bible say here, For as much as thou sawest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands? That's your power of God, the word made flesh. And that it, notice this, it, the stone, break in pieces. Listen to this. The yarn, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold. There's your five. Who smote the image and broke that? The stone did. The great God has made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And he said, the dream is certain and the interpretation thereof sure. So if you can see this in this uh, second chapter of the book of Daniel, who was the first head? The Bible said here in verse 38, Thou, talking to Nebuchadnezzar, art this head of gold. After thee shall arise another kingdom. So let's find out who was the other kingdom that come after Babylon. If you know any history at all, you're going to have to know. All right, go to the fifth chapter of the book of Daniel, and it'll tell you here. In the book of Daniel chapter 5, the Bible said here, speaking of Belshazzar, the king, which was a son of Nebuchadnezzar, he made him a great feast. I don't have time to go into all this, but you remember he made a great feast and called all of his counselors, his sheriffs, and all the great people that he had together, and he broke into the house of God and took the gold cups and so forth and parted with them, if you please. And then watch what happened. And while they were all good and drunk, here come a handwriting on the wall from God. And I don't have time, but you read it and it'll tell you what the handwriting was. Let's go to Daniel chapter 5 and let's just start at verse 24. Then was the part of the hand sent from him, from God, and this is the writing written. Now Daniel's the one that showed this king Belshazzar what the writing on the wall was because none of his Chaldeans, none, none of his uh, magicians or sorcerers could interpret it. So Daniel's the only man that God could use to interpret this handwriting. The Bible said, Then was the hand sent from him, and this is the writing that was written. And this is the writing that was written, Meaning, meaning, tekel, you for sin. This is in the interpretation. Daniel said, This is the interpretation of the thing. Meaning, God has numbered thy kingdom and finished it. To kill, thou art weighed in the balance and found wanting. See, that's what God told uh, Nebuchadnezzar's son. Perez, thy kingdom is divided and given to the Medes and the Persian. And do you know the same night, the same hour, after Daniel read that, then come in the king, Darius, and killed him and took the kingdom. So there goes Daniel chapter 2. 
The first king was the head of gold, Babylon. And then after thee was another kingdom inferior, which is the Medo-Persian kingdom. And then you can find in the eighth chapter of the book of this Daniel, and it'll tell you who the third kingdom of brass was, which was Alexander the Great. And then you find that interpretation as a ram and a he-goat. See? Let me show it to you since we've got time to do this. In the 8th chapter of the book of Daniel here, I'm going to show you that the realm and the he-goat, who this is. All right? The Bible said, In the third year of the reign of King Belshazzar, a vision appeared unto me, even unto Daniel, after that appeared unto me at the first. And I saw in a vision, and it came to pass when I saw, I was at Shushan in the palace, which is the province of Elam. And I saw in a vision as I was by the river of Eulea. Then I lifted up my eyes and saw, and behold, listen to this, there stood before the river a ram. Now, folks, this is not yet to be. I'm going to show you who this is. A ram which had two horns. Notice that. The two horns were high, but one was higher than the other, and the higher came up last. That's you, medio Persians. All right. I saw a ram push westward, northward, southward, so that no beast might stand before him, neither was there any that could deliver out of his hand, but he did according to his will and become great. And I see my time's about up. Well, we got about three minutes, so I want you to listen. He said, And as I was considering, behold, a he-goat came from the west on the face of the whole earth and touched not the ground, and the goat had a notable horn between his eyes. And he came to the ram that had the two horns, which I had seen standing before the river, and ran unto him in the fury of his power. And I saw him come close unto the ram. And he was moved with choler against him, which is anger, and smote the ram and brake his two horns. And there was no power in the ram to stand before him, but he cast him down to the ground and stamped upon him, and there was none that could deliver the ram out of his hand. Now watch this. Therefore the he-goat waxed great, very great. And when he was strong, notice this, here's your leopard. When he was strong, the great horn was broken. I'm going to show you that's when Alexander the Great died. And he was broken. And there came up for him four notable ones toward the four winds of heaven. You read the leopard in Daniel 7. See if that's not the same power. Now the great horn, the notable horn was Alexander. And out of one of them, now here comes your Roman power raising up, came forth the little horn which waxed great exceedingly toward the south, toward the east, and toward the pleasant land, and it waxed great even to the host of heaven, and it cast down some of the host and of the stars to the ground and stamped upon them. And the Bible said, Yea, he magnified himself even to the prince of the host, and by him the daily sacrifice was taken away, and the place of his sanctuary was cast down. And then the Bible said a host was given against the daily sacrifice by reason of transgression, and it cast down the truth to the ground, and it practiced and prospered. Then Daniel said, Then I heard one of the saints speaking to another saint, and said unto the certain saint which spoke, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? Well, I'm going to try to get down into the key part of this and show you who this uh, ram that had the two horns was. Now, read all of this out. We may get into it a little later, but you've got to understand, first of all, who was to take the kingdom from Nebuchadnezzar and then who was to take it from the medial Persians and listen to what the Bible said. Well, I'll probably have to go into this part in our next program, but now study with me in these things and, and, and stay with me. Now I'll be speaking out Daniel chapter 8, and I want to show you that the power that rose up after the medial Persian was truly greasy, and that's your ego. So until we see again, study these things out. God bless you as a prayer. Write us, and if you desire any of these programs, be sure to give us the title of it. And 
We believe they'll bless you and understand it. Now, it takes time to do this. I can't do it all in one program. So be sure you stay with these messages. Don't miss us, and we'll bring it to you more in our next program. So do we see you again? God bless you as a prayer. Praise the Lord. Greetings in the name of Jesus. This is Brother Rowe, and I'd like to thank God for all of you that listened to us. And I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about our ministry. The Lord's blessed us to be able to send our programs out to different states and in different places in Kentucky and Tennessee and most of the southern states. And we do thank God for the ones that write us and support us. And we do take the funds that you give us and use it for the ministry. And we want to thank God that we're receiving letters of people that's really accepted the Word of God. And some are getting saved and they're telling us it's a real blessing to them. But now, if it's possible and you can, we do need your support and help to be able to go further with our programs because you're in a day and hour that the economy is pretty rough and we do really need help from God's people. I don't try to get on the programs too much and, and beg people or plead to people for help, but we are in a time period that it's going to take help to be able to go out. And I'd like to further out maybe toward the north and different places to reach the people and see the power of God to work. And we have a lot of good praying people that's backing us up. And we just thank God for you that listen in. And if you would like to support us and help us, we do appreciate it. And we only use it for God's work. Now, I know you've seen a lot of trouble in the land today with different ministries that's fallen and, and maybe a lot of them that's taking the money that you sent them and using them for the wrong things. But we've never done that and we don't have really that many that back us up like which I believe should back us up. But anyway, we want to try to reach people as far north and south West or anywhere that we can. And we thank God that he's allowed us to send programs out by radio. We're on WLAC Nashville. And that reaches, I believe, about 8 million people. But that don't mean everybody's listening in. And we're also on some TV programs in Texas and just uh, various places in Florida. And we do have a few that support us, but we do need your help if you can help us. And I believe the Lord will bless you. And we also have anointed prayer cloths that we give to you. And we've got some free literature. And one of them's called The Mystery of God. And the other one's called Christ Reigns with 144,000. And we'll send these to you by just simply writing us but we do thank God that he's allowed us for these programs. And we do thank God for the people that listen in. And we want to invite you to stay with us each day because the Lord's blessed us to send it out. And if you want to help us with it, lift our hands up in the ministry. We will appreciate it. Now, we do love you and want you to recognize that Jesus Christ is the same today as he was in the beginning. So he loves you. Serve him with all your heart in Jesus' name. We'd like to thank you for joining Brother Rowe and invite you to continue with him in this outreach. Your prayers and support will be deeply appreciated. If God leads you to help in this ministry, please send your contributions to Church of Jesus Christ, P.O. Box 283, Baxter, Kentucky, 40806. May God bless you.